Well, I've got another project from a viewer on the table today. Um, you can see I've already gotten started with disassembling and cleaning it. I actually had some video footage before this, but it seems to have been deleted by mistake with some other video clips, so that was an oops. But anyway, I'm at least not too far along, but anyway, this is a Pinline 210O. So this is one of those early models that has a solid lead boiler. It is super heavy. Got a die cast chassis, brass bearing plates, original open frame motor and everything. So far all I've done is, I mean, you can see I've taken it apart and I've gotten started on cleaning these wheels. I'm just getting rid of the old grease and oil and everything so that it'll run nice and clean. So the condition of this isn't exactly the best. You can see all around that there are quite a few details that are out of place, bent out of shape, and just kind of damaged. So. I'm doing what I can to repair this. The valve gear is missing one small rod at the front, which I should be able to replicate and replace just using some stock material. And there are also a few other detail parts in the little case here, which I'll put back on as I go along. So anyway, in addition to cleaning this up and getting it running, the owner of this model also wants me to install DCC which I think I'll be able to do. I actually ordered a new DCC system finally so that I can work on that kind of stuff. So first things first though, I'm gonna get this model running as well as I can. It's just regular DC power and then I'll worry about um, DCC. So the next thing I was gonna do is just test out the motor here, which I actually haven't done yet. Seems like it's turning nice and free. Uh, there are no problems that I can see so far. But let's get it hooked up and see how it is. Looks like this one will have, well, this is the one that's grounded to the frame, so I'll give it the positive contact there. And then this other one should have a wire soldered directly to the brush, so I'll just uh, hook that up there. It's working just fine too. Kind of hard to keep a motor clipped onto a brush like that. Oh, keep a, keep a clip attached to a motor brush like that. Yeah, that's a really good running motor. It's not the highest torque. But there are no problems at all with it. The lower torque just comes from it being a smaller variety of Pittman style motor. So not quite as much magnet there. But it does at least have its uh, large drive gear to go with the um, diameter of the wheels. The gear is almost as large as the wheels, so that should still give it plenty of torque, and I think this will drive it just fine. So I'll just uh, keep on working on cleaning. I to work on these brass bearing plates, which you can see are a total mess. I think it'll be easier to go in there with a Q-tip. Yeah, that's uh, working better so far. Okay, I've got the worst of the grease cleaned out of there, so that should be good enough now. And I was gonna clean the paint out of these slots, but then I realized that they're not even actually supporting the axles. It's the brass plates here. And since these are already making plenty of electrical contact on their own, uh, that means that I can just leave that paint alone. So I'm just going to go ahead and start putting the wheels back into here. Just do things one step at a time. Just got to find the insulated side of each of these. And of course, an easy way to be sure of that is the quick short circuit test. Let's see, this is the back, so the wheels should all be on this side. That's correct. Sometimes you can also see the thin strip of insulation in the um, driver tire. So this here, I think I can see that strip. So this should be the insulated one, which means this would be grounded. Now some of these wheels I'll have to clean up before I can get a good short circuit test. But yeah, I finally found a spot there. So that is the correct side. So I'll just keep going with that. Just adding some fresh oil to each one. Uh, 
Okay, I've got the wheels on as well as the motor. And quite a few screws were actually missing from this, so I've been installing some new ones, which you can see there with the silver Phillips heads. So that's holding it together nice and tight. And the motor seems to have the right gear mesh and everything. And this screw here I think is actually just a mesh adjustment screw, so I've just got that tightened there and everything looks like it's all good. I'm actually not 100% sure if this is the original pin line motor. I think it is. I'm just not 100% sure. So I'm just uh, hooking things back up here to make sure that it's working. It's actually working in the opposite direction from what I expected. So in that case, I'll flip the wheels around so that the engine picks up from the left rail. Okay, I've got the wheels flipped around, so I'm just giving them good cleaning buffing here. I think you can see pretty clearly just how much of a difference that makes. There, those are nice and shiny now. So the next thing I need to do is get these side rods cleaned up. And they are nice and greasy. Which you can see right there. <laughs> As I'm putting these rods back on, I've noticed that they are pretty heavily worn. You can see that the holes have expanded quite a bit just from running around for a long time. Hopefully they'll still work fine. If they don't, then I'll see what I can do. Maybe um, cut out some brass bushings to work with them. But yeah, I'll keep going. We'll see how it works. All right, let's see if this works. Oh, nice. That's actually really smooth. Well, that's good. All I have to do is oil that and get the rods back on there with the cylinders. Alright, so since there were a couple parts missing from the valve gear, I was looking to see if Bowser had any replacements. They didn't. Those were long out of stock. So then I started making some replacements myself from scratch, but then I was looking through my other parts and realized that a couple spares that came with my Bowser M1 kit are actually a match. I just had to trim uh, this rod a little bit shorter, but the other one is exactly the same as what's already on here. So... All I have to do is just uh, rivet these parts together. Make sure that's working freely. Yeah, it all looks good. Rivet flared properly, so now I just have to do these other two rivets for the rods that are already on there which could get a little bit tedious, but I think it's doable. Be careful not to damage anything. Let's see, did that flare out correctly? It kind of flattened around there. But that's holding on fine. So that should work. If it causes any problems, I'll just replace it with another rivet. I've got spares. All right, so after a little more rework, because I found that there were some joints actually put together backwards before, and then just making things fit and work a little better, I think I've got this to a point where it can run. So I've got it reassembled. So I'm just gonna hook up the uh, test leads here and see how it does. Make sure that doesn't short. All right. Okay, it looks like it's working. Oops. This valve gear's hanging loose, though. I'll have to take care of that. But beyond that, things are looking good, I'd say. It's running nice and smooth, too. I've got it mostly reassembled now. I'm just trying to get this drawbar figured out. I have 
no idea how it was actually put together to be insulated and to pick up power at the same time with just what I'm seeing here. And it almost looked like there was some sort of a, like an insulating plastic or rubber glue around it, which I don't know, I'm not really sure about. So I might just have to figure something out and uh, come up with my own system. Okay, I put together a temporary wiring system to the draw bar. So it's uh, not exactly a stable electrical connection, but it's at least enough for a little bit of testing, just to make sure that it's going around the track. Hey, you can see it's a little bit jerky there. But, looks like it's running. Well, that'll be a lot better once I get a reliable electrical connection in there, but that at least tells me that the steam engine is running really about as good as I think I'm going to get it. Um, like I showed before early on, the uh, um, insides of some of these holes are kind of ovaled out a little bit. There's not much I can do to really fix that, so I think there's always going to be a little bit of that thumping noise as it runs along. But it is still running, and it seems to be doing pretty well, so now I can get on to doing a little more work on it. Now instead of doing my usual DC wiring, the owner of the model actually wants me to try putting in DCC in sound. So I have a Tsunami decoder right here. This is one that was made for Bachmann steam engines, but you can really use it for anything as long as it's all within specifications. And I've also got this 20 by 40 speaker to go with it. So I will mount these inside of the tender, which has a massive amount of room on the inside, which you can see there. So it's plenty of room to work. So I just need to figure out the wiring on here and get things started. But before I do that, I also need to isolate the motor. So I'll just uh, get that back off of there. Oh, also, the uh, headlight that's installed in here, I found is a one and a half volt bulb. So that actually works perfectly with this decoder, which is designed to work with one and a half volt bulbs and LEDs. So no need for resistors. Now, as for isolating the motor, that's actually pretty easy to do on a motor like this. So first I just need, well, this uh, brush plate, the brush plate itself is already an insulated piece. So all I need to do is remove this wire that was put in there. And then I just need to stick a piece of insulation onto the spring here. And with that done, the motor will be completely isolated for DCC. Okay, so here's how I have the wiring and decoder all set up. So the engine is picking up from the left rail and going to the terminal and the tender from the right rail. So that's all in there. And then the uh, motor headlight, they're all wired into there. And since there's only one light, I didn't look into adding anything else. There's no uh, reverse headlight on the tender. And the trucks for the tender, I wired them together and to the decoder so that it wasn't relying on just the uh, contact points around here. So that should help to make it a little more reliable. If there end up being any pickup problems, then it's actually possible to just uh, plug a Keep Alive uh, battery capacitor um, directly into this plug here. So that's actually a pretty convenient design. And I've got electrical tape lining the inside here to make sure there are no short circuits. So now I just need to mount the speaker and I'm gonna use a bit of uh, foam that I have for that. I think it's a, I think it's neoprene foam is, is the material. It's a stiff, but at the same time, it's soft enough that it dampens vibration. So it's pretty nice, holds nicely to glue. So I'll just get these last couple things together and we can see how this all works. Well, I put it onto the track and it seems to have powered up straight away, which is good. I got this uh, MRC Tech 6 so that I can start testing stuff like this. So let's see if the model runs. Oops, switch the direction. Seems to be working fine so far. Okay, 
start to do a little bit of tuning on the chest, so you can see. And a few other things. And what about the headlights? Let's see if that works. Uh, I don't know what all the functions are, so I'm just going to press buttons until I find something. That's not it. So it seems like these are all just sound functions so far, so maybe I need to look into the other ones and see what there it is. Well, I'll mess around with that and see if I can find that headlight function. Well, after going through all the different functions, it seems like the headlight isn't working, so I might not have wired that correctly. So I'll go see what I did wrong there, and maybe it'll work after that. All right, so after a quick email to Soundtracks, I tried something else in there. And it looks like I might have fried the forward circuit, but the uh, reverse um, light circuit is just fine. So I have it um, that light bulb wired to that now, and it's working fine. But, as it turns out, the uh, light that's already wired into here, I think it has some kind of uh, some kind of a short circuit with the body of the engine somewhere, because uh, if I try to wire it correctly, then the decoder can't even power up now. It just uh, gives me an error on the controller. So, I'm going to get rid of this old headlight that's in here entirely and replace it with a new one that actually um, works reliably and won't blow something up. Just testing things out first to be safe. Don't want to install the headlight completely and then have things not work. And it looks like things are finally working. Alright, one rewiring job later and getting things back installed. Checking some other points of insulation and this is finally functioning the way that it's supposed to. So with that done, I'll just uh, finish up fixing up those details and giving it some touch-up paint, and this will finally be ready to send back. Okay, I think I'm all done here. I did a little additional programming of the decoder to get things working just right. Did a little bit of work with the EQ and the chuff rate. And then the details, I put everything back on that I could. Did a little bit of extra painting here with the red on the cab roof and on the tender roof. There were only a couple detail parts he sent me where I couldn't find any locations for them, so I went ahead and left them off. I'll just send them back. Maybe you can find a use for them. But yeah, I think this is finally ready to go. You can see the chuff rate is matched much better. Sounding pretty good, I think. Sounding pretty nicely, too. This is my first experience with uh, programming a sound model in HO scale. A little bit of electrical pickup issue going over my switches. Those have always been a bit of a rough spot for any of my engines. I got the light back on. As long as it's running over a clean track with um, no real imperfections. I don't think there will be any real electrical issues, but like I showed earlier with that decoder, um, it's made so that a keep alive battery or capacitor can be plugged directly into it, so that might be beneficial on this model, but as it is now, this is still working pretty nicely. So yeah, I think I've done what I need to do with it. So I think it's time to send this model back now. And with all the work that's been done, it should hopefully last him for a very long time. This is actually one that his grandfather built, so it's been in the family for decades. So maybe it'll last him just as long as it did his grandfather. I certainly hope so anyway, and I hope he's happy with the work that's been done on it.